Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at LearningCraft, and today I want to show you another thing we can do with some masking and a very simple line of action script to get things off the ground. To begin with, let's take a look at what we will create here. We have this project in which we have this cute little dog, and if I wanted to go and zoom in on the dog, I have this the ability to drag this little magnifying lens over so I can see what the dog looks like underneath. All right, so it's a very simple thing of going and peeking and seeing what this dog looks like, what if I make him much bigger. Now how is this being done? Well, this is a fairly simple approach and it uses some of the principles that I've described in some of the other modules that can be found here on YouTube using masks. And in this case, if you want to follow along at home, feel free to go out. If you come to www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash and in this case you want to pick up a file called magglass.zip. And what magglass.zip will provide you are basically a few different things. We have two pictures that are of this dog, as well as a little graphic, which is this blue circle we've named Hole. Now what we want to do here is we want to create a layer, and we want to be able to use the mask to look through one layer to see the layer underneath it. To begin with, I want to go over here, and I want to set up my timeline so that I can go and put things in. I'm going to go in here and select this, and I'm going to say Dog Small, and that's where the small version of our dog will go. Now you really can't see when you look over here in the thumbnails, they both look the same, but the one here that, that's not called tail wagging dog big will be the small one and that will be the one that fits onto our stage. Now to make things a little easier for us all to see, I'm going to go down to 50% here and I'm going to position the dog onto my stage. And there it is. So the dog is all set and what I want to do now, just so I don't accidentally move the dog around at all, is I'm going to go over here to the timeline and I'm going to lock that layer right down. And now we have a layer two. Now in this layer, this is where the dog big version is going to go. So let's just go quickly make a note of that. And we'll even spell dog correctly, what the heck. And now it's just a matter of going out and grabbing the graphic and once again positioning it over the stage. Now you'll notice that in this case the graphic is a little bit bigger than the stage and that's perfect because that's what we want to be able to do. And we're going to place it there. Now sometimes people have a hard time wrapping their heads around how we layer things, so let me explain it best I can. What we're going to do is we're going to create a mask that's going to sit here on this layer. When we create a mask, the mask and the layer directly below it basically become incorporated as to one object. And what this means is that what we're going to see through this hole is this graphic. However, what we're going to see when we're not looking through the hole is going to be the graphic underneath it. So in this case, we're going to have a small version of the dog and then we're going to be peeking through the hole and seeing the big version of the dog, which is exactly the type of effect we're trying to get anyway. Let's go up here to layer three and just name this mask. And once again, if you haven't learned anything about masks through any of the projects we've done so far, a mask in essence is a hole. And what we're going to do with this hole is we're going to look through it and see something else. So what I want to do is I want to start by coming out here and grabbing this graphic and I'm just going to place it over here to the right hand side of the stage. As I can see up here, that graphic is now being held in this frame on the mask layer, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, I'm going to need to be able to talk to this object because I need to be able to tell it to move around. If nothing else, I want it to follow the cursor while I move it around so that I can use it as a magnifying glass. Otherwise, it just sits in one place and that's certainly not very exciting. So to talk to this object, I need to first be able to give it a name that I can refer to it as. Now the problem we have with graphics is that we can't name a graphic. A graphic in Flash is pretty much just an object that can appear on the stage, but we certainly can't refer to it if we want to talk to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this object is selected, and down here in my Properties window, where it currently says Graphic, I'm going to pull down this little menu and I'm going to say, you know what, I'd like this to be a movie clip instead. Now the reason for converting it to a movie clip is once I do that, I can name an instance of a movie clip, and that's going to really help me. Now in this case, I'm going to use a name that's unique to this object here. In the library, I named it Hole. That's just what the name of the master is, but for this object sitting here on the stage, I can name it anything I want. I'm just going to quickly name this Lens. There we go. And now it has a moniker. We can refer to it as something, and that's going to be very handy for the next step. And what the next step is, first of all, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to insert a brand new layer. And I'm going to create layer. I'm just going to name this Actions. And what this action is going to represent is what is supposed to happen when the program starts. And what we really want to have happen when the program starts is we want the cursor to grab this blue object we've named Lens and have it follow it around. 
So to that point, I want to write a little script that will do just that. So with the frame selected right here, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open up my actions window and I'm going to write a very simple script. Now the script we're using here is start drag. And by the way, it is case sensitive. You'll notice that we have a lowercase s at start and an uppercase d at drag and it's all one word and we'll put it in that way. And when you've typed things incorrectly in Flash, it will turn blue and that's your reward. It tells you everything is good. So in this case, I want to go in and I want to tell it what I want to drag around. And I'm going to put that in quotes and I'm going to say I'm looking for the object that I named lens. That's what I want you to move around. And end quotes and then I'm going to put a comma and say, oh, by the way, I do want you to take this object and lock it to the center of the cursor, at least where the center point is. So I'm going to say that is true. And then finally, since we're done with this command, I'm going to terminate it at the end using a semicolon. Okay, so that's the full script that we're using. Start drag, open parentheses, open quote, lens, close quote, comma, true, close parentheses, semicolon. Okay, as simple as that. Now I can close my actions window and we're all set to go. Now, I'm going to just run this program and show you what it looks like. And what happens now is when I move my cursor around, you can see that this object is moving with me, which is nice and all, but that's not really what I want it to do. In order for this blue object to become a mask, we need to go and declare it as one. So let me close out of here and show you how that's done. So my mask is sitting here on this layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that layer and then I'm going to right click. And what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to make sure that mask gets toggled on. I'm going to say select mask. And when I do that, what happens is now I no longer see the large version of the dog. I'm seeing the smaller version of the dog because what's happening here is I'm really only going to see this object and the only time I'm going to see elements of dog big or if I'm looking through the mask. Now, once again, I'm going to hit control enter here to run my program. And now we still have that object which is attached to the cursor moving around. But now instead of being a blue ball, it's a hole that allows us to see from one layer to the other. We can see what our dog is doing. Now, as you can imagine, there are lots of different things we can do with an effect like this. I don't know if zooming in on Fido here is the best use of it, but hopefully it will allow you to get the, uh, the understanding that you need across. So really, that's, uh, it's as simple as that. I encourage you to go out and give it a try and play around and see what you can do to create some very interesting effects. And as always, if there's anything those of us at Learning Craft can do to help you out, please let us know. We provide a variety of different training programs online and off for media application development, as well as specialists in online advertising technologies and a whole bunch of things we can provide for you there as well. Have fun with the project. This is Rob Graham, and I'll see you again real soon.